with all the very latest weekend headlines, it's the ITV News. Good morning, I'm Charlie Frost. One of the most powerful Democrats in Washington has pointed the finger at President Biden, blaming him for the size of Kamala Harris's loss on Tuesday. The former U.S. House of Representatives Speaker Nancy Pelosi said her party may have fared better if the president had exited the race sooner. It's the latest in the fallout after Donald Trump took the White House and the Senate, with the Republicans inching closer to winning the House of Representatives too. Here's Alex Isaac. As Donald Trump begins to prepare the Oval Office, election results are still coming in for his party. The Republicans are currently gaining seats across the two houses of Congress. They've already won a majority in the Senate and are just a handful of votes away from doing the same in the House of Representatives. That would allow Mr. Trump to more easily push through tax cuts, import tariffs and border control measures. Meanwhile, the Democrats have begun to analyse their defeat, with former House Speaker Nancy Pelosi saying they might have won if Joe Biden had stepped down sooner. In an interview with the New York Times, she said, had the president gotten out sooner, there may have been other candidates in the race. Ms. Pelosi went on to say she thought Kamala Harris would have done well in that and been stronger going forward. But we don't know that. That didn't happen. Instead, President-elect Trump increased his vote share in 90% of U.S. counties, compared with 2020, and won the popular vote, which he failed to do in 2016. But there are still threats to Trump and national security. According to the U.S. Attorney General, Iran sent assassins to kill the president-elect and the people. Merrick Garland claims three have been charged for an alleged assassination plot the week before voters went to the polls, and they were an asset of the Iranian regime, something which Iran has denied. Alex Isaac, ITV News. At least 24 people have been killed and more than 40 injured in a bomb blast at a train station in southwestern Pakistan. The explosion happened in the city of Quetta, where passengers were waiting to travel to Rawalpindi. Militant group, the Balochistan Liberation Army, which is prescribed as a terrorist group by the UK government, have claimed responsibility for the attack. Tottenham and Mason have apologised for not inviting Great Britain's Paralympians to a party this week following the Paris Games. The luxury department stores say a failure of communication resulted in Paralympics GB medalists not being invited to the event, which was held following a joint celebration with the Olympics Team GB at Buckingham Palace on Thursday. It was highlighted by Zach Shaw and his partner Ali Smith, both sprinters, who described it as hurtful and unfair. The store has apologised and say a separate event for Paralympians will be announced soon. Two police officers who died in an ambush following a fake 999 caller among the first recipients of the Elizabeth emblem. PC Fiona Bone and PC Nicola Hughes were murdered in Greater Manchester in 2012. Their fathers say the new award honouring public service workers killed in the line of duty is vitally important. The King will present the Elizabeth emblem to families of the first 30 recipients later this year. And for the first time since her surgery in January, the Princess of Wales will complete two consecutive days of engagements this weekend, starting with the Festival of Remembrance this afternoon at the Royal Albert Hall. Kate, who announced she had finished her cancer treatment in September, will also join the Prince of Wales and the King at the Cenotaph tomorrow for Remembrance Sunday as she continues her return to royal duties. Well, that's it from us for now. Uh, do join us for our lunchtime news update at 20 to 1. Until then, have a lovely morning. Goodbye.